Home distillers aiming for high proof usually use a pot still with a column. My packed column with isothermal deflagmator design does this fairly well, making it feasible to get over 96% alcohol. Columns like this separate out an azeotropic alcohol water mixture at the top end, a process called rectification, and so are called rectifying columns. At the bottom of a rectifying column, liquid drips back into the boiler, and this liquid has the same alcohol content as the vapour coming off the boiler. For example, with a 10% wash, the vapour and liquid dripping into the boiler is about 55% alcohol. As a batch distillation run progresses, the alcohol content of the boiler falls, as does the alcohol content of the vapour coming off it. At the end of the run, when there's perhaps 1% alcohol left in the boiler, the vapour contains about 8% alcohol. Starting with a typical wash concentration of 10-17%, to 17%, that results in a wash alcohol extraction rate of between 90 and 94 percent. A continuous distillation system does not use a boiler, so we don't have this mechanism of maximising alcohol extraction. So instead, we add an additional column below the point at which wash is injected. This is called a stripping column. Its purpose is not to concentrate alcohol, but to strip as much alcohol as possible from wash to minimise losses to the bottoms. As it turns out, with the ethanol water system and wash ethanol concentrations of around 10%, stripping is more difficult than rectification. Alcohol is costly to produce, and it's worth going to considerable lengths to minimise how much is lost. Commercial continuous distillation systems typically have longer stripping columns than rectification. A commercial column for spirit may be perhaps 60 feet high, of which the top 20 feet will be rectification and the bottom 40 stripping. My first attempt at a continuous rig was to adapt the column I used for pot distillation by adding an injection point and wash preheater part way up. A bit of experiment showed that this wasn't going to work. Pack columns like this are sensitive to vapour and liquid flow rates, and when using this with a pot still, the boiler power has to be controlled within 1% in order to maintain over 96% alcohol output. This happens when the section of the column above the isothermal deflagmator has the right balance of upgoing vapour to downgoing liquid. If you now inject hot liquid directly into the column part way up, there will be much more liquid flowing down the lower part of the column, which will be far from its optimal operating point. It will weep like Alistair Crowley's guardian angel. The downflowing liquid will be going too fast to equilibrate with the upcoming vapour, meaning that when you have a high concentration of alcohol coming off the top, the bottoms will still have a significant amount of alcohol in them. In my case, it was 3-4%, to 4%, amounting to a third of the alcohol in the wash, an unacceptable rate of wastage. Columns work by bringing liquid and vapour phases close together so that they approximate the equilibrium defined by this graph. This equilibration process is quite slow, so the vapour and liquid need to be in contact for a while. The lower the surface area compared to the volume of the liquid, the longer the two phases need to be in contact, so columns slow the rate at which liquid drains down and maximise the surface area of contact using sieve trays, packing or bubble caps. After much experimentation and frustration with different types of column, I have finally developed a stripping column for home use that's cheap, easy and effective. It is a 3 metre length of plain copper pipe at a shallow gradient of 1.5% to the horizontal. You add wash to the top and steam to the bottom. With this pipe length and gradient, the wash trickles slowly down the pipe, giving it enough time for interaction with the steam. For convenience, and to make it easier to insulate, I cut the pipe into four 75cm sections and then make it into a rectangular spiral thing like this. Bottoms drain out via a U-tube, which in my case is simply a parrot, and an alcohol vapour steam mixture comes off the top for feeding into a rectifying column. The system performs pretty well. This is a precision hydrometer that measures alcohol content from 0 to 10%, and I can get the alcohol content down to zero as measured with this hydrometer, which in reality means it's under 0.1%. So that's an alcohol extraction rate of at least 99%, which I've not managed to get close to with a pot still set up. Perhaps the most significant advantage of this sloped tube stripping column is its tolerance of different flow rates. 
You have to match the rates of steam and wash input, but if you do, you can get good stripping with flow rates from 0 to over 20 mils per minute of 10% wash, using 15mm copper pipe. That's a wider range of operating conditions than other types of column tolerate. The importance of this is that you don't have to carefully match the stripping and rectification columns. Packed columns operate optimally over a narrow range of vapour flow rates, and to get stripping and rectifying columns to operate optimally together, they have to be carefully matched. There is no satisfactory widely available software system for modelling this mathematically, and so it requires a lot of experimentation. Not only that, but once they are matched, they will only tolerate a fairly narrow range of wash concentrations. It becomes easier with a stripping column made of sieve trays and easier again with bubble caps because of their tolerance of a wider range of operating conditions. But such columns get long and expensive and as far as I can tell they don't match the performance of this sloping tube. Another advantage of the sloping tube is its relatively short vertical height. The rectifying column I use is a piece of 28mm copper pipe about 2 metres long filled with stainless steel spiral prismatic packing. A matching stripping column would be even longer, so the combination would be way too tall to fit in a shed. I have tried to use the same idea of a sloping tube to make the rectifying column, but have not had much luck so far. I will post another video if I manage it. The distillation rate of this still is slow compared to other moonshine stills, but the system is designed to operate continuously without supervision, so includes various fail-safe features. It will produce about 50 to 60 mils of azeotropic alcohol per hour, which is about 8.4 litres a week. That's 8 litres, or 6.3 kilograms of alcohol per week. If that's not fast enough for you, you probably should consider cutting back. The whole system uses the two columns, a steam generator, two dosing pumps, one for wash and one for water to the steam generator, a wash preheater and three temperature control systems for the steam generator preheater and a column top extension designed to draw off volatile undesirables like methanol and acetone. I use parrots for bottoms and product and a simple heat exchanger between the outgoing bottoms and inflowing wash, which has the two advantages of keeping the bottoms parrot at a lowish temperature and saving energy by recovering heat from the hot bottoms. The system is more energy efficient than conventional pot distillation, mainly because the product is drawn off as a liquid and therefore its latent heat of vaporisation is not wasted. Heads are drawn off as vapour, but there's a small amount, so energy losses are small and a 1 metre or so length of 8mm copper pipe gives adequate air cooling to condense the heads. You do not need a Liebig condenser, so not only is it more energy efficient, it also uses far less water. In principle it's supposed to be an adiabatic system, though in practice there is some heat loss to the environment, and total power consumption does depend on how good the insulation is. Heat loss does vary with ambient temperature and this means that optimal adjustment does as well. You're probably wondering how strong can the still make spirit. The azeotropic point at atmospheric pressure is 96.51% alcohol by volume, which you'll never quite achieve, but you'll be able to approach it pretty closely. Using this same rectifying column but with the isothermal deflagmator operating over a pot still controlled by a precision electronic heat controller that had a resolution of about 0.1 watts, I was able to get between 96.1 and 96.4% alcohol over most of a 50 litre run of 40% wash from previous stripping runs. On this continuous rig, the maximum I've managed to get has been 96.35% but I have not been able to maintain it at this level for more than about 12 hours. Changing ambient temperature affects the process requiring small changes in power, but the behaviour of these roller pumps is also a limitation. Their flow rate is not fixed, but depends on the elastic properties of the rubber tube, which in turn depends on fatigue, temperature and creep of the tube within the housing. So for a fixed pump speed, flow drifts slightly over time. The same settings can give a percent product drifting as much as 95 to 96.3 percent alcohol over 24 hours. I'm looking at gear pumps rather than peristaltic roller pumps, though they are quite costly. 
Anyway, at the moment the column will reliably split wash into bottoms with less than 0.1% alcohol and product with over 95.5%, which isn't too bad. The still runs at about 100 watts, 90 for steam and 10 for the preheater, assuming the heat exchanger is being used. That low power not only saves energy, it also means it's cheaper and easier to make because there's no need to handle and control the high currents necessary for powerful electric heaters. It's possible to operate it without the preheater and simply use the heat exchanger from bottoms to preheat the wash, so you only have to heat the steam generator. And you don't have to do that precisely because the steam flow is controlled by the rate at which water is added rather than the power of the heater. That means it could be heated with a fuel system or a solar oven. You could even make it non-electric by replacing the pumps with gravity-fed constant flow systems. I'm planning a series of further videos to discuss the individual components of this system in detail